All right, so today I wanted to talk about how to take care of a blood python. I've gotten a lot of feedback, people saying that they wanted to know more about how to take care of these snakes. They're a species not too commonly kept. Uh, they are getting more popular. There's Every time I go to an expo, there's more and more of them being displayed and being sold. So they are becoming more popular as more people are understanding them and as there's more there's more morphs than there's ever been before. And so to to briefly go over the care of them, um, one thing you will notice about blood pythons is, and one of the reasons why I don't recommend them for beginners, is because they do have an attitude, um, especially when they're young. I did mine is a captive bred female Malaysian red blood python or python brongers my. They are known to be a little bit more temperamental. I have held some Borneos that are, um, they're a lot, a lot tamer. And the, the red bloods seem to be more defensive. Uh, they don't like being taken out of their enclosures too much. Um, and the, you have to do it on their terms. So they, they command a great deal of respect. And that's why I don't recommend them to beginners, because beginners need to be able to reach into the tank whenever they want and handle or take care of the snake. And that is just fine for a ball python or a corn snake, and or king snakes, milk snakes, rat snakes, that whole... The, all those species are a lot more docile and more willing to... When you, to um, more generous to new keepers. Now, if you're a more experienced, intermediate to an experienced keeper, a blood python would be a nice, would be a, a good step to get into the more experienced um, snakes, the more difficult snakes to keep. So, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take her out real quick. Now, handling wise, blood pythons are an easy snake to handle, and a lot of people say they thrash about things like that. They they don't. The one she she has never thrashed around or anything like that when she was younger or anything. Um they are a heavy body snake and they prefer to be on the floor. They do not like being held up in the air like a lot of other species. So handling wise they're they're a good snake to handle. Um they're just they're just really heavy and she she's getting she's probably about 4 years old now. Um, another thing, so I'm talking about the basics of taking care of blood pythons. Um, uh, as far as feeding, I feed her every two weeks. When she was younger, I fed her once a week. I started her off on adult mice. She was, she was able to eat adult mice when I got her. She was about, I think, four months old when I got her. And so now she's eating medium rats every two weeks. Okay, a lot of people, that's probably, to me, I think that's a little bit too much food. Uh, every two weeks, because they they get really good gas mileage on their food. They don't need a whole lot. Um, so I can probably cut her back, but they don't eat that much food. These, these are very efficient snakes. They don't eat food like a Burmese python or a retic. Even a boa constrictor eats more food than than these guys. Um, so yeah, they don't need that much food. They they are a big snake, but even though their size, um, you know, it looks like that. She could eat big meals, and she she should be eating all the time. She they really don't they really don't need to eat that much. Um, another thing is size size wise, she's about four feet long, maybe a little bit over. She's a she's a big impressive snake, but she's only four feet long. That's about as big as a corn snake, so they're really not that long. Um, the only thing is is you know their weight, and they're a much more impressive snake to handle than a corn snake. But size-wise, they're very manageable. Um, but they're heavy size. They do require a decent-sized enclosure, but not huge. Um, she's in a she's in a bin at the moment. She keeps getting into her newspaper. Um, I do keep I have kept her on newspaper pretty much her whole life, and I've never had any problems. Um, you can keep them on anything you want. Uh, the problem with aspen or you know, wood shaving type substrates is they do like to soak in the water bowl and they will pull all that substrate into the water bowl and that will get nasty really fast. And that's another thing I highly recommend with blood pythons. She uses her water bowl all the time. Definitely you need to have a water bowl that's big enough for the snake. Um, 
That is, that's very important. I would not skimp on that. She's a, she's a big snake. Um, that water bowl can fit her whole body in there, and she's comfortable in there. So, um, yeah, substrate, you can keep it simple. Newspaper, they'll do just fine on newspaper. Um, now, they are, for people who aren't used to handling snakes like this, they are a bit intimidating. But that's why I say they're, they're best left to more intermediate to experienced keepers. Um, yeah, they are great snakes. She, she does, she's tamed right down. You can see their patterns and stuff on her. I mean, they are just beautiful, beautiful snakes. So they are a rewarding species to keep. And, um, yeah, they're, there's nothing, there's nothing really horrible I'd say about them, but they're definitely require their own set of, um, care guidelines than a lot of other species. But she's, yeah, she's doing great. And um, I hope you found this video resourceful. Um, maybe I convinced some of you guys to get a, a blood python in the near future. And, um, yep, and I'll, I'll show some additional videos of my bow constrictor and stuff. All right, thanks. Bye.